Right. But there, there are certainly people who I think uh, would say that an essential part of religion uh, is at least the belief that there's kind of more than meets the eye in some sense. That, that, there, is, that there is some ultimate source of meaning, that, that uh, uh, there's some transcendental source of meaning. Yes, or, no, I would certainly agree you, with you that. And you agree with that? Oh, yes, and, and uh, very strongly. And certainly that has nothing to do with science. Okay, and, w and how would you characterize the transcendental source of meaning? Well, again, it's a, it's a very personal thing, just a, 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 it's a, some people have it and some don't. It's an intuition? Yes. About, that, about uh, the nature of the universe? Yes, that, the, that life doesn't make sense unless you, you believe in some sort of a purpose. Uh-huh. Um, that that applies to the community as well as to the individual, and so the, 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 and on, on every level. So it is certainly your view that science is compatible with religion. Yes. Um, and and it sounds like it's not necessarily your view that science would lead you to religion. Uh, no, it very often does, of course. Yeah. I mean, I mean, a lot of great scientists have actually sort of regarded science as strongly connected with their religion. And, mm -hmm. But it hasn't been true of me, because my science is much more tinkering, and I don't, I mean, for, for me, science is much more just a skilled trade that I practice. Uh -huh. it doesn't, so it's not, it's not particularly connected with deep thoughts. But you have... Uh, constructed a kind of almost a metaphysics, I guess, that uh, maybe I'm reading too much into it, out of your science that is in a way suggestive of religion in the following sense. You alluded to it earlier when you were talking about evidence of kind of mind in the universe. And in your writing you've talked about three levels of mind, I think. There's the human mind, that one you don't have to argue with people much about, they'll buy that. Then you've talked about mind residing at the at the micro level, the atomic subatomic level, and then at the very macro level, kind of the universal mind, the mind, the universe as mind, or something. Right. Now, what what do you what do you mean by that? Well, this is, I think, a possible model for the way, way that the things might be. I, it's not something that I believe as as a, as a as a matter of faith, but I think it's it's just an interesting model. Of, of how the whole thing might fit together, and I think it's, it's, to me it's quite plausible, but I wouldn't claim that it's necessarily true. Okay, B but what does the word, what does the word mind even mean? What, what, are, the, what are the manifestations of, what, what is it about the way the subatomic world acts that leads you to think that mind is a reasonable way to describe what's going on there? Well, simply that it seems to make choices. And that's part of quantum physics, that notion. Yes. The fact is that you have an atom of uranium. It sits there on the table, and, and then tomorrow it's gone. It's, it's decayed into thorium plus an alpha particle. But nobody can predict whether or not that's going to happen today or tomorrow, or it may take a billion years. So that the atom seems to have a freedom to choose. That's, a, that's something which characterizes quantum processes, that they seem to just uh, occur spontaneously. We call that mm -hmm. spontaneous decay. And so it is, it's spontaneous. That, to my mind, implies that the thing makes a choice. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, generally when decisions get made, in some sense a decision is being made every day in atoms around the universe. Right. Um, so that, that, uh, this, this uh, freedom that the individual atom seems to have yeah. Seems to me sort of an indication of some some rudimentary form of mind. And right. I mean, certainly, generally, when we talk about decisions being made, we think of a mind as making them. Right. That's true. So and that that's the linkage, but it doesn't. It, it may not be true at all. It, it, and of course, it's 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 quite unknown whether, in fact, the quantum processes are important in the human brain. Many people think that they're not. Mm -hmm. uh, that remains to be seen. And, I, I, it seems to me very probable that that, that our, our sort of our intuition of free will is somehow connected with quantum processes, 
Hmm. But it could very well be that it's quite different. Hmm. Uh, yeah, that seems... I've wondered that myself. And also the, uh, the, the phenomenon of consciousness. Do you think that's tied in there with free will? And yes, the, obviously. Yeah. And, and of course then many people believe that that's just an illusion, but uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm quite content to... The, the consciousness is an illusion? Some people yeah. maintain that. I'm sure I have it. I don't know about them. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's exactly my feeling, too. Okay, and when, when you talk about uh, mind at the macro level, at the level yes. of the universe, what, what is the evidence of, of a decision-making process at work there, or a mind-like process? Well, we don't have any evidence, but it just seems very plausible since mind exists in the universe at our level, that it might very well exist all through the universe. And in that case, it's sort of, uh, it's, it's, that's what I choose to call God. And, and but not that I have any direct evidence of it, mm -hmm. but I would find it very reasonable. What is it that, what is it that would, is there anything that would be explained by it? Well, the, 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 there are these the, the fact that the, the, the universe is so friendly to life is sort of the great mystery. That's, uh, the, the, the world is full of mysteries, and that's uh, was, uh, right. one of the things that I enjoy about it. And so that, that this, the fact that the, the universe seems to be, sort of to go out of its way to be friendly to life in all sorts of details, and the fact that liquid water has such remarkable properties is something that is absolutely essential to life as we know it, mm -hmm. and it depends on all sorts of details of the physics of how atoms of oxygen and hydrogen behave, which could have been different. Right. And so it, it looks as though it's not a random universe, that in some sense it's, it's designed to be hospitable to it. I don't say hospitable to humans in particular, but hospitable to life in general. So you're kind of here. Uh, you're kind of talking about what is sometimes called the anthropic principle. Is yes, I hate the word because it it, it implies humans. But in fact, I think uh, uh, the the fact that the, the the universe is hospitable to life and mind to me is very important. And mm -hmm. so I don't like to call it anthropic, but it's certainly the same idea. And, and the idea is that there are a lot of uh, properties of the universe that, had, had they been even slightly different than what they are, would have led to a universe incompatible with life. As far as we know. I mean, there might, of course, there might have been then other kinds of life that would have emerged. Mm -hmm. But at least it wouldn't, wouldn't have been compatible with the sort of life that we understand. Mm -hmm. And this, this idea is tied in closely with what you've called the, the, the principle of maximum diversity? Well, not tied in very closely, but that's another way of thinking about it. I mean, that, that, that the universe has this amazing diversity that we see. I mean, this, this, this afternoon at lunch, we were hearing about all these great things that are being found by the astronomers. And every time we go every Tuesday to listen to the astronomers talk, and it gets a little bit more complicated and a little bit more amazing, what the, the kind of stuff that exists out there. and. Huh. So that seems to be characteristic of the universe as we see it. And that's because it's even more true in the living world. Uh -huh. that life just doesn't exist, but it seems to be so extraordinarily luxuriant. And instead of having a few species, we have 20 million. And, and mm -hmm. that seems to be in the nature of things. That, okay. that evolution always seems to lead to tremendous diversity. That's true in the astronomical world as also in the biological world. Yeah, the um, and and, and the, the way you phrase the principle of maximum diversity is it succinctly. It's it's what the, the, the things are built so that the universe is, is as interesting as it could be, or something right. like that. Yes. Okay. That's, that's got to be. A, a, this is the most interesting of possible universes. Now that's a difficult hypothesis to test. <laughs> right. It's not supposed to be science. That's. <laughs> That's, it's just a, a poetic way of talking about things, and I think uh, it, it, I, mean, I, I take a very limited view of science. I think science has a restricted 
domain of application and, and that's why it doesn't ever come into collision with religion in my mind. And mm -hmm. The science just doesn't touch these questions. And 